What are your expectations for Kate this year, Mort? Roy, nothing less. So, All right, you want more well, words, huh? Well, you'll, okay. I mean, uh, you'll get more words, fine. Let's move to the Detroit Pistons now, Mort. Obviously, the number one storyline with them will be the number one overall pick. Cade Cunningham, you know, breathes new life into that franchise. And I can tell you from, I work with a, a Pistons fan who is just like frothing at the mouth to see Cade Cunningham play this year. He is entering the year as the favorite to win rookie of the year barely very 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 close between him and Jalen Green according to FanDuel Sportsbook he's a plus 250 Jalen Green is a plus 270 what are your expectations for Kate this year Mort? Roy nothing less all right you want more well, words huh well okay. I mean, uh, you'll get more words fine look okay, well, he's he's a big playmaker He's a yeah. guy who can, who can really set the table for guys. He's not someone who will insist on taking 25 shots per game, but he will take those shots if he feels that no one else is stepping up. I think he's one of those rare talents who is extremely quick at identifying balance, role, and how to and when to assert himself offensively. Plus, I think he is... I don't think he's going to be a plus plus defender in the NBA level right off the bat, but he was a good defender last year in college. I think he'll carry that over to some extent so he isn't a train wreck defensively. Most rookies are bad defenders. I don't think he'll be a downright bad defender. I think you'll have a lot of those nights where you can kind of see the, the defensive potential where you go, oh, okay, yeah, like in a couple of years, he, he's going to be one of those great two-way players. So I'm just expecting him to come in and be the generational talent that we all think that he will be. Yeah, I mean, it almost feels to me similar to the Lamella Ball Anthony Edwards rookie of the year race that we had this past year, yeah. where like I think Jalen Green is going to lead all rookies in scoring. Yeah, but I think Cade Cunningham is a more well-rounded player than him, so I think it wouldn't surprise me if Cade Cunningham either leads all rookies in assists or is second to Jalen Suggs in assists. You know, I think he he could be pretty high up in terms of rebounds too. So I yes, think, absolutely. you know, he, he'll be, he'll, he'll have like similar impact, similar well-rounded impact to LaMelo versus Jalen Green, who I think, you know, could be a 20 point per game scorer right away, but I don't think we're going to see him averaging five assists or five rebounds a game. Um, so I'm curious to see how the, the race shakes out, but it should be really fun. I mean, this this class was extremely hyped, especially at the top. Um, so for really for both of these teams, Detroit and Houston, you know, these these young guys are going to give a, a nice breath of life to teams that could really use it. I, uh, I don't know if this is a hot take. Yeah. And I and I need to make sure I think Luca was the last one to do it. But I think he's going to be one of those rare rookies who comes in and averages 25 and 5. Ooh, okay. The, the Tyreek Evans. Exactly. The Tyreek Evans, but but with substance. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah I would assume exactly. Luca, right? Yeah, he must yeah be. I think I'm, I'm fairly sure Luca's. See, I'm not looking this up. I'm fairly sure Luca was at like 21, almost eight rebounds and like 6.4 assists or something along those lines. I think, I think he was above. Um, so, so for Kate, I think he, he's in that threshold and I just think he's obviously better than mm -hmm. Tyreek Evans. Yes. But I, that's the kind of production that I think he can. That doesn't mean I'll be disappointed if he comes out and averages, you know, 14, four and six, like, okay, of course. like yeah. it, everyone has their own time on when they hit the ground. But I, I just think he's so poised when you hear him talk. When, when you see how he moves, the way he finds spots on the floor without being this athlete, you know, elite athletic player, I just think he can think his way to like 10 points per game, easy. Yeah, I just looked it up. There are five guys in NBA history to have. Uh, can, can I guess? Can I guess? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. M Michael was one, LeBron obviously yep. two. Yep. Um, Luca. Yep. Tyreek Evans, as we thought, as we talked about. Yep. 
Oscar. Yep. Nailed it. Well done. Yeah. Okay. And, and man, it is funny to see Tyreek Evans in the list with Michael, <laughs> Oscar, LeBron, and Luca. <laughs> That reminds me of that list that goes around Twitter once in a while with those very oh, arbitrary like, stats with that young. That, yeah. <laughs> it feels very similar, yes. All right. Let's talk front court, Mort. They, yes. They brought in Kelly Olenek on a pretty re- reasonable deal. I, I actually thought, especially given what he did after the trade deadline in Houston where he averaged like 20 and 10 a game almost. Um you know, they got him at basically like $12 million a year, a little bit more. Uh, but Isaiah Stewart was one of the pleasant surprises of last year's draft class. You know, they got him, I think, 16th overall or 19th overall. Um, no, 16th, right? He and Sadiq Bey was 19th. But yeah. he, he actually, I mean, he's raw, which was expected, but actually performed pretty well, especially as the year went on. So how do you see front court minutes shaking out between those two guys? So I think the the Kelly Olynyk signing was very very strong just in terms of what he can do because he can shoot and pass he is he's well rounded enough to play the four so yeah. he because he isn't really a d- defensive marble at the five but you can swing him up to play the five and allow it seem to play small so for example Jeremy Grant who is I guess I want to say a traditional four these days, but with ball handling skills, like he mm-hmm. is a guy who five years ago could have played the three a little bit more maybe, but but he he's very well around to that position. I, I love the, 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 the three-man rotation there in Stewart, Olenek, and Jeremy Grant, like interchangeable. Like there's a lot of movement, a lot of shooting, a lot of passing involved with those positions. And then Stewart, Stewart is, like you said, he's more of a raw guy, a little bit more energy, but also like just an aggressive rebounder. I think he's improving defensively. There's just a lot to love there, but but he is still somewhat of a project. So yeah. I think the Pistons are going to lean heavily on the Olympic spacing and Jeremy Grant using that spacing a lot. Mm-hmm. But you can mix and match, and that's really what great what's great about this front court. That's really what they're missing in in Cleveland. Now that we're yeah. talking about, about front courts, it's it's the flexibility there that that they can pass, that they can dribble, that they create shots off the bounce. I, I, there, there's just so much flexibility there. And then when you add a big guy like Kate Cunningham, who's like six seven, six eight, and who plays you know whatever position he plays, he's going to be like Luca and Giannis. Like he's going to be positionless. He's, you can just pluck him in. That means that ultimately the Pistons are going to be having a lot of size on the floor without yeah. relinquishing flexibility, movement, all those things. I, I'm very intrigued to see what they come up with. Yeah, no, I, I'm right with you there. I, I would guess that Olenek is going to start over Stewart just because- That would seem reasonable, yes. Yeah, and it's not to say that Stewart isn't going to get minutes. I think he should play a lot because they're still very much rebuilding. But, you know, I, I would just guess they don't hand $12 million to a guy to come off the bench. And I'm guessing Kelly Olenek doesn't take $12 million to come off the bench for a very much rebuilding team. Like I'm In 2025, I'm, that'll be the min deal, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. But you're, you're totally right about the size issue because you got Kate Cunningham. He's listed at 6'8". Yeah. You have Jeremy Grant at 6'8", you have Olenek at 6'11", you have Sadiq Bey at 6'7". You know, those Bey and Grant can handle minutes both at the three and the four. I think Grant's yeah. probably better at the four, as you said. Um, but Bey could really be interchangeable between those positions. Olenek could be interchangeable between the four and the five. I don't know what Cade Cunningham is. I don't think it matters. He's that Luka-type prospect where right. you could, who gives a damn? what you call him positionally. He is the primary playmaker, but who he guards, anyone. I Like, I don't care. One through right. three, one through four, he has that type of size. And Killian and then, Hayes is 6'5", by the way. Yeah, and that's who I wanted to go into next because he had a rough rookie season. But having a guy like Cade, you know, is going to take a lot of the playmaking responsibility off of him. It might yeah. enable him to get the more looks off the ball. So do you think Cade can help Killian put his, you know, brutal rookie season behind him? Yes, that I hope so. I think I I think the expectations on Killian were were just wrong. I brought it mm-hmm. up before he got drafted that I have spoken to coaches over here 
that, that basically set out right him going from the the French league to the German league was such an asset for him because he went to the league to the world's uh, second most athletic league in France to one of the league's least athletic leagues in Germany. And of course, because of that, he was able to get from point A to point B very, very quickly. And he was able to gain separations. And, and then when he reached the NBA, it was like, no, I can't really you know, gain a lot of separation on an elite NBA athletes. Mm -hmm. So I think he has to pivot in, in terms of who he is as a player. Like he has to be one of those Tiantulo Russell guys instead. Like someone who spots up, someone who finds their own jump, jump shot in like off of screens, just play smart basketball because that is what he does have. And those coaches who I spoke to did say that as well. Like his shot is real, first and foremost. Like he's a really good shooter. But at the same time, he also thinks the game out really well he's he's a guy who can you can expect to make high iq plays when he feels comfortable so i think his role has to just pivot he can't be that guy who kind of breaks down the defense like calls the screen and then goes crazy with you know hesitation dribbles followed by double crossovers and all that he won't mm -hmm. be that guy so to have someone who can do all those things in Cade, who can really create offense whenever he wants to and then just be the guy who benefits off of that attention, that would be Killian's sweet spot. As this spot up guy who can make proper reads and can make good passes and can just burn people from a shooting perspective, I think that would be the right way to utilize him. Yeah, and again, I mean, it's similar to, you know, like an Isaac Okoro in Cleveland where they're not gonna need a ton out of him because you have Cade Cunningham, you have Jeremy Grant, who had a monster breakout year last year. You have Steak Bay, who had a great rookie season and should be able to build on that. You have Kelly Olynyk, who can, as he proved in Houston, he can score 20 points a game. Yeah. So expectations are going to be so much lower for a Killian at this point. Like it's going to go from you're the point guard of the future, you know, seventh overall pick. You're you're the point guard of the future. You're going to be one of our like centerpieces of this team. And it's like, well, no, Kate. Who gives a damn about what Killian Hayes can become? We have Cade. Like, let's yeah. just hope Killian Hayes cannot be Dennis Smith Jr. You know, like a total just like yep. wash out of the league in a couple of years. And you know, if he can focus on some of again, like the more well roundedness, becoming a better defender, like getting more work off the ball, improving that three point shot. I think there's definitely room for him to improve and not having the pressure on him of the balls in my hands every single possession right should help him kind of pick and choose his spots more than he could last year so one of the coaches that i spoke to about killian a year ago said that it's probably for him to adjust in the nba it's probably more so along the lines of speeding up his shot and also mm. realizing that players are just so athletic because the raw shooting ability is there. He said he, yeah. he sat sideline during some warmups and saw Killian regularly hit, you know, 27, 20 feet, uh, 28 feet threes and, and did it very, very effortlessly. Like there is a legitimate three point shot in there. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of recognizing, oh, I'm up against other elite talent here. Like, because the talent level discrepancy between the German league and the NBA, I, I, I cannot put into words how tough that can be to adjust to. So I think yeah. with that initial shock over and having passed now, now he's coming into year two realizing, oh, okay, I, I can't do the same things. Mm -hmm. I just need to, to, to kind of read the floor and pick my spots. And as soon as he gets to those shots, then I trust the three. I don't, so I don't yeah. think it's a matter of him tightening the shot i just think it's a matter of getting his release just a little bit quicker and identifying when he has an, an open shot and when he can use it yeah i mean it's also worth noting he missed what like two three yeah. almost three months with it was an ankle injury right he i mean he only played 26 games so yeah he, that didn't help matters and i will say he did have like some some breakout games uh, i think it's fair to say i think he had like the the chicago game what was it? Let, let me just yeah late that. in the year yeah he had 21 points eight yeah. assists seven rebounds yeah that was the one like he, yeah. and he looked way more comfortable there like he he finished the year i have it here as well like the last four games he got 30 plus minutes per game and he just looked better like he averaged mm -hmm. uh 11 and a half points six and a half assists like it was it wasn't you know, 
setting the world on fire, but it was decent. Sure. Like you could see his his comfort level increasing. So he went into the summer on a high note, which I think is important for him. Yeah, 